जय श्री कृष्ण टू ऑल वेलकम टू पाथ टू आनंदम गीता सीरीज फ्रीडम फ्रॉम पेन्स एंड मिजरीज टू हैप्पी हेल्दी एंड पीसफुल लाइफ एंड टूडे सेशन आवर सीरीज इज ट्वेंटी फाइव Why does God manifest, and what does He do? Many times we have that question, and Guruji reminded us all the time that every action, everything in our life is God's manifestation. So thank you, Guruji, for coming in our life, blessing us. every sunday morning all the every time every moment but sunday is especially we all get together and directly listen to your messages and your guidance and with your guidance and with your blessing path to anandam was founded all these books were written and with your blessing became the best seller on amazon and guided to deliver this message to every human being wherever we can share your wisdom get together learn and practice bhagavad gita's teaching and be a part of establishing the dharma in this world so thank you very much and pranam to you and today's contents are based on actually we have finished the chapter 3 karma yoga and now we are in the next chapter gyan karma sanyas yoga and we are taking the verse number 7 and 8 and in that we will discuss what is avatara and its purpose what are how many types of avataras are what does god do what is dharma what is a dharma who are virtuous and wicked people and then the question comes am i a reincarnated ascendant master my sankalpa yes i am i am divine and tip of the day with meditation and question and answers so very first sankalpa we had that new of me every day i'm going to transform myself self improve self purified and raise our conscious level raise my conscious level higher and higher and higher and that was the very first sankalpa we took it on the very first session where we committed ourselves that i am not a dhritarashtra anymore i'm not going to complain cry blame but i am an arjuna which was the second sankalpa where i had given the reins of my life in his hands ask him to run the chariot of my life and take me to this blissful journey of self transformation purification and uplift me and experience satchitananda so let's all pray together and seek for his guidance with humbleness and let's surrender to him many of you know this verse it's a very powerful verse if you don't know the sanskrit 
part of it, no problem. As long as our attitude of surrender is there, that's all Lord Krishna wants. So Arjuna watch, we are all Arjuna on the path of raising our conscious level and removing our doubts and asking him the question. So karpanye dosho pehte swabhava paschyamitvam dharma samur cheta yachrasyani nishchitam bruhitan me shishyas deham shadi maam tam prapanyam shishyas deham shadi maam tam prapanyam shishyas deham shadi maam tam prapanyam my heart is overpowered by the weakness of pity. I have all my composure and my mind is confused about my duty, dharma. I am requesting you to tell me, please, what is definitely good for me? I am your disciple. I surrender to you. Please instruct me. Thank you. So every time we have a session, we discuss this part, but there is a change in this part. Though Arjuna is a student, Lord Krishna is a guide, he is the teacher, he is not still the God yet. Keep in mind, he is still guiding him as a teacher. By step by step, giving him the instructions to operate not just to Arjuna but our life righteously. It teaches to know the purpose of God's manifestation and my own purpose too which is attain eternal happiness, peace, anandam while living in this world and beyond and realize who I am. These are the guidance, the blessing comes from Swami Hari Harji Maharaj. As we are on the Karma Yoga, you know, when Arjuna got confused, when he prayed, first thing Lord Krishna taught him in Sankhya Yoga, that don't worry, you are an Atma, you are not a body, which is temporary, you are everlasting Atma. So just perform. Understand this. And don't be sad and confused about this war, what is right and what is wrong. And Arjuna gets more confused. He says, yes. The purpose of life is to for self-salvation, self-realization that I am Satchitananda, I am Atma. But then what should I do about this life? How should I deal with it day-to-day -day challenges? And Lord Krishna is explaining him in his language, as a Kshatriya's language, that perform your karma. But do every action surrendering to me for the benefit of all. Sarva Bhuti Terata. And Arjun did not understand this. He is still confused. How could I work? Karpanya dosho pahat sabhava. Pachyami tvam dharma samur cheta. It combines that. But then, again he asked him, how could I perform my action? without any expectations. Karpan. Then Lord Krishna guides him further through giving him the wisdom and also how to attach to the results of your action. Do not expect it. 
In other words, the three chapters, chapter three, third, fourth, and fifth of Bhagavad Gita are focused on karma yoga. Starting from Karmanya Vadika Raste, from chapter 2, verse 47, which is very confusing. That how could I work without expecting any results? And that's where Lord Krishna gives him further wisdom. In other words, I always call it, these three chapters give you the Initially, you you hear in verse chapter 2.47 and then how to not to be attached, how not to expect the results. So this is more like I say, is a more detail about karma yoga, but it's like doing a PhD in karma yoga. So Lord Krishna takes his agyan one step by step, each layer of the agyan like an onion, peeling him and taking him to the essence of life, essence of karma yoga. And then with how he takes him, he takes him to the whole Bhagavad Gita, step by step because Arjuna still does not understand. So whole Bhagavad Gita talks about, if you ask somebody what is Bhagavad Gita and they say it is all about art of work. Karmanya vadika raste ma faleshu kadachan ma karma falhetu bhurma sango vastu karmani. That's all they talk about it. But it is much more than that. Living the righteousness life without selfishness with the bhava of seva and then do your best with love and compassion and let go. So in other words, art of action, karma yoga is every action which leads us to our self-salvation, gives us more love, peace, anandam, eternal happiness. So, Lord Krishna is still a teacher. But here, in chapter 4, he takes him little by little and he tells him, you are so dear to me. I'm giving this wisdom to you again because I have given this wisdom to Lord Surya Bhagwan Ji. And that's where Arjun even gets more confused. He says, you are here, I am here, and what are you talking about? You're saying that you have given this wisdom to Lord uh, Bhagwan, Surya Bhagwan Ji ko? How would that be possible? And that's where our Lord Krishna gives him an indication now that I am just not what you are seeing me. I am much more than that. And he gives him a glimpse, just an idea that I am the supreme power. And he starts saying him <clears throat> that yada yada hi dharmasya glani bhavti bharat Abhyusthana madharmasya tadatmanam shajami ham. These are this verse, as I mentioned, chapter 2.47. And then yada is this chapter 47 and 48 verses. These are, if you talk to people who know a little bit about Bhagavad Gita, they just talk about these three verses. And in fact, Mahabharat series may. These two verses, three verses were repeated over and over. In fact, it started with that. Yada yada hi dharmasya glani bhakti bhakti. So, he's, Lord Krishna says that I manifest myself for the well-being for all. 
Why? Because whenever and wherever there is a decline of righteousness, dharma, and a rise of unrighteousness, glanir bhavati, dharma se glanir bhavati means adharma is fail jata hai. Adharma. Oh Arjuna, then I manifest myself. I incarnate, incarnate, main avtar leta hu. I come in the physical form. But here he says dharmasya and adharmasya. So what is dharma? What is a dharma? We have to understand before we can understand why does God appear. So here, what is dharma? And what is a dharma? Code of ethics and righteous living are followed righteously. In other words, work for the righteousness of Samaj, for society, and for ourselves, for the family. But everything has to be done righteously. So course of ethics must be followed according to the scriptures. However, when these are not followed, then that's where the adharma comes. Lord Krishna also explains to Arjun that when I give this wisdom to Surya Bhagwan, and Surya Bhagwan pass on to his son Ishaku and then pass on to Manu. Is it lineage, family lineage, or I would say humanity lineage? Then the dharma was there, but after that. Little by little, it got, it just, a dharma, the uh, father, Surya Bhagwan, who had given this wisdom to his son and passed on his son to another, that tradition was on. Then the dharma was established. But as long as that tradition stopped, the adharma took over. And that's why we see the impact of it. The course of righteousness livings are not followed. The simple message here is, as a parents, as a grandparents, as the elderly, we must pass this tradition, Bhagavad Gita's teachings to our upcoming or our friends, our family members, our new generation, wherever. And if not, a dharma will take over and over more. And the ethical behavior, which is practiced during the dharma time, is not practiced. We see it all the time. What is going on with the little girls in India and what is happening with the, due to the greed. So own prescribed duty is fulfilled during the dharma. Whatever my duty is, we try to do our best. But... With the dharma, the duty is not followed. Everybody becomes so selfish. Like Dhritarashtra was a good example. Duryodhana, Korvas, where they were insulting, hurting other people. So that's why it says comes under the dharma. But respecting others is dharma. One time I asked Guruji, always said, Acha karma karo, acha karma karo. Do your good karma. And when I asked him, Guruji, what is good karma? And he said, Respecting others is a good karma. And there are few other things. Self-rejection, self-destruction. Like Arjuna started self-rejecting himself. He was on the road of a dharma. He did not want to follow his dharma and protect the society and participate in the war anymore. And Lord Krishna explains him that this is a dharma. Though he is a Pandav, he is very pious. But at that time, when he got depressed, he got confused, he was on the path of a dharma. And also the excessive uses of natural resources which are given, if we consume more than what we're supposed to, that is a part of a dharma. But here, self-rejection, Swamiji's favorite is, do not call yourself murk. Me murak kal kami. He says, no, you are not a murak. Main sevak kal kami. Always say that I am the sevak. So in other words, the opposite of dharma is a dharma. 
Dharma opposite opposite of dharma is a dharma, and opposite of a dharma is dharma. So, in summary, sharing with others is dharma, but snatching from other is a dharma. Always keep just a one line, and the benefit of following is dharma leads to light and liberation, moksha, but a dharma. Leads to darkness, miseries, pains, bondage, birth and death, death and death to death. All are the causes of a dharma. At the same time, he says he takes the avatara manifest. Some bhavami yuge yuge. It comes as so. What are avatars? What is the meaning of true meaning of avatar? When the supreme power descends, niche aati hai, for the sake of uplifting us, ascending, descending and ascending, that is when the avatara comes. Here, Lord Krishna, and here avatara, the incarnation of Lord Vishnu's. Here, there are many avatars, like many other lords, like Trinity, the Shuji, Lord Krishna, Vishnu's three trinities, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. Then they have their own avatars. But here we are talking about more on the Vishnu avatars. When they come in the form of animals or human body or some form, why? To counteract an evil in the world and restore the value of dharma. According to the time of the uh, need of the time, some bhavami yuge yuge, whatever the need of that time is. And here are the mainly the focus on the ten avatars of Lord Vishnu. Vishnu, though there are unlimited avatars, but here focus more on some of them were on Sat Yuga, like first four words in Sat Yuga, like came in the form of fish, like we all know that. In the uh, uh, and then the turtle and the boar and mankind. These are all dwarf uh, uh, vamanas and uh, uh, pashurams. Uh, uh, that was in more on the dwap. I mean the treta yug. Ram Bhagwan Pashuram. These are all came there. And then in dwapar yug, Krishna Bhagwan ji. And then Buddhas, and then now there is another one. They say in future, which is in the Kal Yuga, so there will be another avatara, Kalki avatara. But keeping, we should learn from here that avatars are come for the benefit of uplifting the humanity. Here you can see the pralas. They come for what is the purpose of avatars? Here are the degree and type of avatars. Supreme being, how many types of avatars of Lord Krishna's or, or Lord Vishnu? So we are talking about many, but some of them I just put it here. The type of avatars it is called Paripun avatara, which is called the hundred percent of God's principles. Like Lord Krishna is known as for the sixteen colors, Puran Pursha. Where Ram Bhagwan is Puran Avatar, but he's known as for the 80% of the God principles. So 14 Kala ke Bhagwan ji. Why Lord Krishna was 16 Kalas and Lord Rama was 14? Because Lord Krishna, he could manifest himself. You look at it, you know, the three times as we know from Mahabharat. First time he showed his, uh, his full fledged manifested form to his mother when, when he opened, mother told him to open your, because he used to eat the mitti, you know, sand. And one time Jashoda ji got so mad and he says, open your mouth. Because he says, no, many mitti ni khai, I have not eaten it. And he says, show me, you open your mouth. And when he opens his mouth, he shows him the whole Brahman. Second time, when he went as a peace ambassador to her Hastinapur to 
ask them not to just to give the five gowns to Pandavas so the war can be then the war will not take place. And the third time he did it in the Kurukshetra during the war. So he did that, but Ram Bhagwanji never practiced that. He just lived in a normal human being form. Though these avatars come in the very regular path, like their mothers get pregnant and then they get the delivered and then they go through the childhood and then they go to the Guru Shiksha. So they just live like a regular human being. That's why we cannot recognize them. But they have a much more power than us. And that's what it shows that that's where the Lord Krishna had the power and Arjuna had the power. I mean, the um, Ram Bhagwanji had the power. But there are other like Kala avatars. Like many of them, as you know, we know the Moini avatar. Moini avatar came when there was the manthan of the ocean, when the devas were um, devas were taking over. So this is called Samudra Manthan, Ocean Manthan. At that time, God, Vishnu God appeared in the Moini Roop to distract the devils. So they do not take the Amrath and drink it and become Amar, but he gave it to Devi Devtas. Then there are the partial avatars. They call it the Anshavatara. Where Lord incarnates for a very short period of time and then he disappears. He comes for a very particular purpose, like Harna Pralad to save him from his father's tortures, Harna Kush. So, though that time they just become like different forms, like sometimes they are in the animal form, sometimes in the bird form, sometimes in the then they are in the principles of God. In other words, there is a percentage of divinity in each avatara. Paripoon avatara has a hundred percent divinity. The supreme power. Poon avatara has 80 percent. And then Kali avatara then becomes the five percent. And then this partial avatara which come and go where the lot of these rishis are known to be mm, partial avatars, they all have some purpose behind their life. Also, the difference between partial avatara and the paripoon avatara, they have an option. They come voluntarily. They don't just come because they have a choice to come and not come. Where the And then the partial avatara also has the choice. When they hire the divinity, they have the more control they have whether they want to come in manifested form themselves, or Lord can direct them. These rishis, they send them back that now you have a different purpose on this world and therefore you should go back. So Lord sends them back for some purpose as well. Here you can see that and see all this Ma Mahamrateshwari, Swamiji, Guru Nanakji, Gautam Buddha and Mahabir, and Jain Munis and uh, Vivekananji, uh, uh, here the uh, now Sadguru is uh, Jagat, the Sadguru is very famous. So, so you see Swami, uh, Swamiji, and uh, here is the, I don't remember his name, but you know, my mind is kind of, yeah, but uh, here is Bullesha, okay? Bulesha here. So uh, Jesus, all these came in a different, different forms, different, different time, whether it's uh, their own choice or sent by God to do the benefit for the society. And then there is another one, eternal avatara, which we all experience. These are, this is when we have the divine feelings, good feelings motivational feelings, when we are more loving, caring, sharing, peaceful feelings, they call the eternal 
of Tara. So these are the feelings which are come within our self. But here, you know, look at the partial of Tara. And then there are the partial of partial of Tara. So their percentage of divinity, the ratio is different, but they're all on the same path. So though avatars may appear in different forms at different times, places, and circumstances, yet they're all the manifestant of the one supreme Lord. So again, it comes, we are all have been originated. We have only one source. And we came from one source and we will go back to one source. And so what does God do? Here comes another verse. God manifests for the well-being for all. And he says, Paritranaya sadhu naam vinashaya cha dushkritam dharma sthapnarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge Time on time on time, I come for these four reasons. Protection of dharma, protection of good people, divine people. Here, again, as I mentioned before, he comes in the Mohini Roop to make sure the devas are not Amar, but the devas are Amar. He comes to bless. Here in the Narad Muni form, he comes. He comes in the different forms to bless Prahlad and many others. And then he says, I come to destruct of the wickets. Here, Lord Krishna is comes. He is killing Kansas. Ram Bhagwanji taking care of Dr Dr Ravan, which we just celebrated the Shera last week. So they all come for some purpose, different purpose, different reasons. So that's what he says. I come for four, four reasons. Reestablishment of righteousness. Here he's, he's reestablishing the righteousness, not pro, uh, giving the amra to devas. Blessings, destructing, taking care of. Wicked people, we are the cons, and we know this. So there are two types of people. That's what Lord Krishna is saying. Sadhu and Drishkant. Who is Sadhu? Who is the virtuous people? Who is the dharmic person? And who is the dharmic person? Again, the people who establish, help establish the righteousness, dharma, they come under the Sadhu Sant. But the who perform the adharma, they come under drushkata, wicked people. Like here again, Duryodhana, Dhritarashtra, and nowadays there are so many people in the world. Putin name comes, and so many other people are on that path because of their greed, their ego. But the sadhus are who are sadhus? the people who are enlightened, what do they do? They awaken other people, they guide other people, they motivate other people, and they promote the godliness. They become the mentors, like you saw the previous slide. These are the mentors for us. They, but the wicked people, they misguide other people. They are dishonest. They are very ruthless. They are Almost, I call it a liability on the society, like terrorist. But the sadhus also, Pandavas considered to be sadhus. They were pure soul. That's why they call it sadhus. They come under the category of sadhus, but the Kauravs come under the category of wicked. They are very self, uh, selfless. Sadhus are very selfless, very giving, very loving, very compassionate very content. Like Arjuna, he wanted to give the whole kingdom. They wanted to, Pandavas wanted to give the whole kingdom. But Lord Krishna says, no, this is not righteous. You are setting a wrong example for the society. You must have, stand up for your rights. 
and they do that's why they said they do not want to hurt others they do not believe in non uh, in violence they are very non violence people we, on other hand wicked people they come under the category of corrupts very selfish very jealous very greedy like look at Duryodhana just wants kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. That's all only mantra he had. He wanted to kill Pandavas. He tried many times. He was very violent. And they practice vices, demonic qualities, as I said, Duryodhana here. And these people, sadhu, sant, virtuous, divine qualities like Arjuna. So who are dharmic people, saints? I just put my favorite ones. But I put the mother on the top. Mother is the top. I would say she is the most dharmic person. Totally, whatever we said, sadhu, sant, pure soul, whatever you want to call it, very selfless, very loving, compassionate, thinking for the kids all the time. So mother is the, to me, the most dharmic person more pure soul. I put them also, the doctors, the true doctors, they take care of it. That's why they consider to be God. I put them, my good friends, they come in a difficult time. They're also very dharmic. They come with love and compassion. And they are also very dharmic people. I put them in the same category as I put the other saints. But here you can see Swami Radha Nachi. Here, Ram, here, Ayurbindo. Swami Ramna. Here, this Swami from Mudan Hali. Swami, we call him Swami Madhusudanji. Very pious person. He's doing so much for the world. I think he, I have a lot of good stories with him. And then, you know, the head of the founder of ESCON, Ravi Shankarji, Guru Nanaji, many saints, many saints. These are all divine, divine souls which are up, doing so much to uplift the society. But what is the difference between avtaras and reincarnated masters, ascended masters? These are all the ascended masters. And here the Lord Krishna has descended himself as the master. So what is the difference? That question just came to me and this is the answer came to me as well. Also, I confirmed it. That avtaras is a power to kill for reestablishing the righteousness. As Lord Ram, he killed Kans and Lord Krishna and many others like he killed Kans. Here, there is a one more point to note that when avtaras kill wicked people, though we see them as a wicked people, but if you look at Ravana, he had a one fault, ego, but he had another 99% qualities. He was very divine. He was the son of Rishi. He was the best devotee of Shiva. So, due to the one bad quality, one vice is in them, they, God appear himself takes the avtara to kill. But they don't just physically kill them. They give them mukti. They give them moksha. So this, this killing is not a regular killing. This is a moksha. Lord Krishna, Lord Rama is giving Ramana a moksha by removing him from this body. That was the only one more karma he had to do. Get the mukti from this vices. Similarly, Ra Krishna Bhagwan Ji killed Kans. And there is a story that Kans was boomed. And he was given the ashirwad that you will be killed by supreme power. And all this was Maya created by the divine power. 
divine maya so when so they get the mokshas these supreme powers come to kill and give the moksha to these powers but at the same time the difference here comes the reincarnate masters can establish righteousness they can do the goodness in the um, society establish the help society help people but cannot kill they do not have a power to kill there's a fundamental difference because if they do they will be considered as a murderer where the supreme power they come to give the mukti but these people have come only to establish the righteousness in the society and uplift the mankind so the question comes again are you a reincarnated ascended master as i said here is a distinction ascended means uplifting ourselves supreme power descends themselves to take a avatar or send the rishis but we uplift ourselves that's why we are ascended and these ascended masters like though ramakrishna was is known as the descendant not the ascended but kali kamli wale he is also you know some people believe that he is ascended he is avatar of some of the hanuman ji but hanuman ji himself is considered to be a partial uh, form avatar of uh, shiv ji so so this is a lot of wisdom lot of bahut gehra very deep knowledge and very deep karmo ka khel jise we call it maya is the more one we get into deeper the more we learn about it but the question here comes am i reincarnate ascended master or not where am i though there these people have only 3% divinity according to the data i got from the different places different scriptures but doesn't matter whatever the percentage is our goal is to increase our divinity within us by self purification self transformation by self disciplining and practice 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 of bhagavad gita then little by little we will be uplifted through the karma yoga by living the righteousness developing more selflessness and doing it with love and compassion and let go and this calendar as i always share this is the 30 days calendar for karma yog though it in generally you know the whole three chapters considered to be devoted for the karma yog but we are learning more and more so along with our morning activities whatever we have like mantras or reading bhagavad gita but start before starting our day we perform and all of us have been doing that then we also do some exercises yoga pranayam meditation whatever we can do and but during the day we take one of the practice and continue to practice practice until we become the master of it until, until we feel more loving and compassionate and more selfless develop more selflessness and then we evaluate our activities and then with the meditation practice it but do not pound yourself do not downgrade yourself because that's a dharma whatever we do we pat ourselves on our back and say yes whatever happened suppose we made some galti we made some mistake ho gaya learn from it and try not to repeat it but put a conscious effort not to repeat it and little by little then we learn to surrender and then let go and by doing that this is how we will uplift ourselves as i mentioned this is a very good slide 
please take it very, very seriously that we as a Jeev Atma, little by little become Dharmatma and Mahatma and then we be, reach to the our Param Dham, become the Paramatma, merge with Paramatma, ultimate moksha by practicing the Gita's teachings. Karma Yog, Bhakti Yog, Gyan Yog and remove our Vishad, our Tamsik Pravartis by little by little to Raisik and then Satik and then finally to Gunatit and higher self and experience who I am, Satchit Ananda. So our Sankalpa time, I am an ascendant master. God has not sent me here to waste my life. Wherever I am, I should put a conscious effort to uplift myself and experience the ultimate happiness, eternal happiness, Anandam, and live in a healthy and peaceful life and feel that I am Satchit Ananda. But have a patience because it is not as simple. It is a very slow process like a turtle. But our lifestyle must be too directed toward that. We should take the Sankalpa and then little by little we will reach there. Shanai Shanai Upparmed. Here it says, Shanai Shanai Upparmed, Buddha Grati Grahita, Atma Sansa Man Kratvana, Kinchit Api Chintet, or Kisi Chiski Chintani Karni, do not contemplate. One gradually attains peace and tranquility of mind by totally abandoning all selfish desires, contemplating, controlling all the senses and mind by intellect, keeping the mind fully engaged in the God's consciousness and thinking of nothing else. And with each sankalpa, we come closer and closer to universe of Paramdham. So thank you very much. Knowing the purpose of God's manifestation and practicing karma yoga, leading toward experiencing eternal happiness, healthy, peaceful life, and getting freedom from pains and miseries little by little. So thank you, thank you, thank you for it.